And we're going to do something similar that we did back when we did the perpetual ball bounce. We're going to find a center point because we're actually only going to do half of this assignment. We're going to sort of conserve our energy because it's a mirrored assignment where when the ball starts off on this side, it's going to swing down to the center here and loop up to this point. But when it reaches its high point and reverses direction and comes back down again, it's going to be exactly the same as what it did over here. So we really only need one side of the swing coming up and around like this. Then we can take and flip the drawings over, trace them off, and then trace them through, and you end up with both halves of the action. You'll end up with this part coming up and looping, and it'll just be a perpetual loop. But we're only doing half the drawings to figure it out. Okay? So it'll save us some time. So in order to do that properly, we have to find the center of our sheet of paper. So I want you to take your paper and fold it right through the center peg and line up your two square pegs on the side there so that these holes here are lined up exactly the same. So you just give it a little fold like this and that'll just indicate where the center point is. So we need to create a, a fulcrum which will be this high point right up here. And it's just like an inch, an inch and a quarter off the top of your sheet of paper is all we need. Now if you want to, you can use this as your first sheet of paper. It's totally up to you. And we're going to start off with our spear over at this side here. So just make it a tiny little circle like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a line from this fulcrum point here. We're just going to put a nice little loop in it. It comes down like this. Now the curvature of the loop is totally up to you. You can make it more curved if you want. Uh, the more you curve it, the lower it's going to go down here because when it starts to straighten out towards the bottom, which we will straighten it out a little bit, there has to be some pull to the string. So we're going to also incorporate a little bit of stretch and squash in it, but we're not going to overly exaggerate it. But again, it's, it's sort of up to you. If you follow along the way I'm doing it, it'll, it'll look fairly decent, uh, but there are different ways that you can approach it. As I've been saying all along, you can approach your animation in any way that you want. So this will be our drawing number one. Now what we want to do is we want to create a path of action for this puck that's here and it's going to come down and swing across through here but again as it gets down there what we want to do is we want to straighten the line out a little bit we're not going to straighten it completely but we do want it to be straight so put your next sheet of paper down here and we're going to find that same fulcrum point Just put the X on there so that we know where it is and then indicate where your center point is down here on the sheet of paper because what we're going to do is we're going to do a little shift and trace to get our next key. So using the fulcrum point as the anchor, we're going to line that point up like this. You can just put your finger tip on it and then you can rot rotate the paper around until it lines up with the under drawing there of the previous one. And you can line it up so that it's pretty close to the center there. You want the ball to be maybe just a little bit behind. Okay, so in this instance here, if I trace that off exactly, that's where my circle is going to end up right there. But what I want to do is I want to drop it down a little bit further so that I can straighten my line out and just create a little bit of a pull on the string. So I'm just going to drop the ball down about the same distance so that it's just touching the, the bottom of the previous one. So it's like one ball length down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from my fulcrum point a line that's slightly straighter coming down like that. So when you flip the two, you'll see that the line straightens out a little bit and gets a little bit longer. But we don't want to stretch it too much to the point where it looks exaggerated overly. Also make sure that your ball is the same size. You don't want to get any shrinking going on. And then what we want to do is we want to find the opposite point on the opposite side here. Thank you. 
the opposite point over here, but slightly higher. Okay? So what we can do is we can take and flip this drawing over, and then using our light table, if you've got one, obviously you guys don't have one right at this exact moment, but helps you to see through it a little bit better. So we want to go slightly higher, maybe leaving a space of one ball in between there. Okay, so there's my original one from drawing number one. So I'm going just one above that. So I've just drawn on the back of number one, but I do need a fresh sheet of paper. I'm just going to place that over top and I'm going to trace off that position. And then what I need to do is I need to draw the curvature of the line going from the fulcrum point right there. I need it arcing in this direction here. Okay. So what you could do is if you want to get the same curvature that you have on this one here, is you can simply take and shift it and trace it off. Now, you'll notice that in this instance here, it's a little bit shorter. So what I have to do is I have to bow it out just a little bit further. maintains the overall same length. Okay, so we're just dealing with a little bit of shrinking and growing here to try and maintain the overall volume. So we've got first drawing, middle drawing, and then our high point drawing over here on the other side. So you can see the lines going through. So that's the progression of the drawings going through there. Then what we want to do is we want to add one more drawing, which is going to be our link up drawing, which is essentially the mirror image of our number one drawing. Right? So you can take drawing number one, flip it upside down, and you can do one of two things. You can trace this one off on the back side, and it'll save you one sheet of paper. And then if you take your extra sheet of paper, you can now see through it a little bit better. You can trace that one off. So these are our key drawings for this action. So we have drawing number one. We have mystery drawing number two, where it's straight down. Mystery drawing number three, where it's at its high point. And mystery drawing number four, when it's starting to come back down and it links back into the opposite of number one. So we don't know what these numbers are, but what we can do is we can start to plot out the overall path of action and break down our timing. So if we take a blank sheet of paper and we just indicate lightly where our key drawings are, this, we can create a path of action which essentially takes us through this point here, up to this point here, and then it's going to reverse and come back down again. So we're just going to draw a little bit of a loop right there, just so we know that there's a separation between it. Okay, so that's our overall path of action. Now timing wise, you can break this down so that you've got a half a second swing. So that from this point here, across to this point here, it's going to take half a second and then back to this point over here takes another half a second, which gives you a full one second swing. Or you can create a one second swing going across here and then coming back for another second. Okay. You can break down your timing any way you want really. So let's just work it out and see what happens. So anytime we have a key, one key to another key, where do we know that we always have to put our in-between, first in-between? Always goes where? In-between where? How far? 
Sorry? The, the middle one? The first and the first key and the last key? No, the first key and the second key. Oh, first and the second key. Where does the in between always go? Halfway. Halfway. Okay. So we can indicate our halfway position right there. Now, when this pendulum is, is dropping, it's picking up speed or it's losing speed? What's it doing? From this point right here, what's it doing? Is it gaining or losing? It's gaining speed. So we're going to speed up. So therefore, we need a slow in to the action. So therefore, we put another halfway position right here. So that alone will create our slow in. But it's not enough because that's pretty abrupt up in here. So what we want to do is we want to break it down one more in here. So now we have two frames, four, six, eight. This is 10 up to here. And essentially, we have to do the same thing mirroring on the opposite side to get that same type of an action. So once again, we're going to go from this low point to the high point up here, which is a slightly different distance from this position. So we've got to adjust where that halfway position is a little bit. So we find the halfway position there, then a quarter going up, and then an eighth going into that one there. When we come back down again, what's going to end up happening is it's going to go back to this timing here in the reverse. So what we want to do is we want to try and figure out, okay, maybe what we want is a halfway in between from this position to this position. We have to have at least a halfway in there on that loop. And we probably need one more in there as well because in order to get our transition from this position or sorry, this position up here to this position here, we need to have at least two drawings in there to describe that action. So we're going to put one more in between in here. Because of the distance from this position to this position to this position, these are all exactly the same here. This to this to this, that's the same. But see how much it's slowing down here. It's essentially taking one, two, three to get to the equivalent of where it took one here. So what we want to do is we probably want to slow this one down just a little bit in here as well by putting in a half in there. And then to mirror that on the opposite side, we're going to drop a halfway in here. No, actually, we'll leave that one as is for now. Because what's going to happen is it's going to come from this position here to this to this, and then it's going to open up to that, which is just a little bit smaller than this one here. So we'll be OK on this side. So we'll leave that one exactly as is. So now we have all of our in-betweens charted here to link them up on either side. So this is drawing number one here. This will be drawing number two. So it'll be three, four, five, six, seven, oops, six, I gain seven, eight is over here, nine, and ten is the high point. Then coming back down, eleven, twelve, and thirteen is the opposite of number one. Okay. So thirteen and one are the same, they're just on opposite sides. So we'll get into the reverse timing later on. So that's our one half of our swing. So now what we can do is we can go back and we can start numbering our keys based on our chart here. So we have drawing number one here. This drawing here is drawing number five. So we can write five down here and put a circle around it. Our next key is the high point, which is number 10. Put a 10 and a circle around it. And then coming back down, we're coming down to 13, 13, and a circle. So now remember we talked before that when you're planning out your path of action like this, it makes it a little bit more clear and easy to figure out your timing. But now we can take each of these segments, and this section right here turns into a timing chart. So we can see that 4 is halfway, 3 is a quarter, 2 is an eighth, going into 1, or coming out of 1. So if we go back to drawing number 1 here, we're going to put our timing chart on the side. We're going to drawing number 5 is our next key. We write 5 here with a circle around it. 4 is halfway, 3 is a quarter, 2 is an eighth. We take out drawing number 5, do the same thing. Draw a blank timing chart on here. We know that we're going up to 10. 6 is halfway. 7 is a quarter. 
8 is an 8, and then we've got 9 as a 16th. Then on drawing number 10, timing chart, blank, we're going into 13. And on this timing chart, we have 12 is the halfway position and 11 is a quarter. So 11 is the halfway and 12 is the quarter. So now we've got our timing all plotted out. We can now go back and start dropping in our in-betweens.